Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. As always, likes, comments, and subscriptions are appreciated. Welcome back for another News I Missed, where I go over news I missed. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I keep thinking that I could be surprised by the news, but nope. Stablecoin issuer Tether has announced that SmartPay aims to boost the Brazilian's population access to the popular stablecoin by making it available at more than 24,000 ATMs across the South American country. They said the difficulties and limitations imposed by inflation and a less than inclusive financial system has excluded many of the many Brazilian citizens from being able to participate in the country's growing economy. Adding tether tokens to ATMs across Brazil provides the opportunity to include many people in the financial system. This will bring major changes not only to the payment industry but to the entire Brazilian financial ecosystem. So, one uh, this was one of the most popular news stories out there. I wish I was joking. That's why I said you sometimes think you, you know, you're not going to be surprised by the crypto space. But alas, here we are. I didn't really explicitly get why this was extremely uh, popular news. I assume it was kind of thrown out there, my opinion, by the people from Tether to say, hey, look at what we're doing a lot of times news like this is thrown out as a we are there to help the people. Not that they're not there to help the people, but you understand what I'm saying. It's just extra publicity. The idea is, is that many currencies around the world are constantly inflating. The people who are most affected by this are usually people who are not a part of the financial system. For those of you who don't know, banks do not like poor people. They tend to not open up branches or anything in areas where they think that they cannot make enough money and this is kind of the fix that crypto brings but then you bring in something along the lines of tether or another stable coin and it kind of becomes this well you can now trade or transact in something that is stable air quotes if you will in comparison to the world's largest uh fiat currency but this was quite gigantic news. So apparently 24,000 ATMs across Brazil are now going to allow people to buy into Tether. I wonder how things like this are legally allowed to go through. Uh, as far as I've heard stories before that there are governments around the world who don't like people butting in to what they're doing and or allowing people an avenue outside of their current financial system. And the idea that, like, think of that number. 24,000, like, there are probably not even 10,000 ATMs in your city or your country. Like, I'm, Of course, country, but like, it's, it's a huge number. Like, that's not a small, that's kind of like, you know, every five blocks, there's going to be another ATM that allows you to uh, get away from the Brazilian real. So yeah, this was very popular news. Apparently, it's going to happen or begin on the 3rd of November. I wonder if this will actually have any dramatic or gigantic change for people there. How many people will actually start using it? A lot of times, it takes a while before people realize that there is an alternative to something that they've been using for a very long time. It's also quite smart of Tether because, once again, we don't hear this kind of news from any other coin projects. We hear sometimes that years ago, X coin project was thinking about working in X country, but it never actually ended up happening. So imagine if Tether ends up working in 55 other countries and they have 24,000 ATMs there as well. How many more people then have access to their services? And Tether is also, of course, being paid in the background as well from fees, but... Yeah, one of the most popular news stories is that people in Brazil will be able to use Tether. Yeah, see, it's kind of weird, right? It's, it's, it's not the kind of news you would expect, but it was very popular. That's the Brazilian ATMs will have Tether starting on the 3rd of November news. Yeah. Let's move on. 
Also in the news, the website Crypto will be participating in the upcoming Flare token airdrop. Sure. As the distribution date for Flare tokens to XRP holders edges closer, top cryptocurrency exchanges have started declaring their support for the airdrop. Huobi Japan announced in August that they will be supporting the Flare airdrop. Now the website Crypto, a leading cryptocurrency trading platform, said it will be supporting Flare token airdrops as well. They said, we are supporting the Flare airdrop for XRP holders from supported jurisdictions. According to the announcement, Flare will be distributed based on the balance of its XRP holders at the time of a snapshot that was taken. Wow, has it really been that long? Oh my gosh. A snapshot that was taken on the 12th of December in the year 2020. It has been a while. Here's the tweet for it right here, talking about that they're going to be supporting it. As far as I can tell from what I've read online and what I've been able to find, I believe this is going to be a one-to-one uh, one airdrop, i.e. if you have 500 XRP, you will receive 500 air, air flare tokens. I think there's also going to be 100 billion flare tokens as well. I believe that was the original uh, amount of XRP, so I guess it's meant to mimic that and that i remember the moment this was announced and people were going completely insane because the idea is we don't get as many airdrops as we used to years ago one of the main ideas for a lot of cryptocurrency companies and things in the cryptocurrency space was that if you support or are on a specific blockchain uh let's say here was the idea years ago it doesn't happen if you are using Ethereum, like you, you have Ether, you are using the Ethereum blockchain, and let's say somebody creates a sunscreen coin. It's what's on the table. I can't think of any other name. And they create that coin that you would get an airdrop of those tokens as well because you're on the Ethereum network. This is one of the original ideas. It doesn't actually end up happening anymore, at least. Uh, but one of the main prospects was that people would actually hold on to the original coin, i.e. Ether and or XRP in this case, because they would be constantly anticipating new coins airdropping to them. This would be a form of, uh, what's the word? Um, universal basic income in a way. As long as new projects are being created and your, and your chain remains strong, you would continue getting airdrops basically forever. So when this news came out originally, there were tons of people who were buying up huge amounts of XRP hoping that they would be able to get a huge amount of flair as well. It's taken just about two years. I spoke about this earlier this year. I think I made fun of it because I was like, where's where's the flair? And somebody was like, it's coming. You got you to gotta wait. And it's like, no, normally for airdrops, it takes like days. Like they announce something. Hey, we have a project coming. The airdrop ends up happening. It doesn't take normally two years. Um, so as it stands, uh, the website Crypto has now announced support. I don't think any other major exchange has announced support. I haven't heard or read or seen anything in the last couple of months from Binance, from Coinbase, from Kraken, most certainly not from Gemini. Does Gemini even have XRP on their... I would be shocked if Gemini had XRP on their platform. They... Anyway. Um, cool. Wonderful. I hope the airdrop happens eventually. I hope it doesn't take another year. I hope people get their money. And yeah, that's basically all there is to say. That's the Flare Token XRP airdrop news. All right. Let's move on. Also in, for some reason, this was popular, but it really shouldn't have been. It's just kind of logical news. It seems that USDC, USDT, and BUSD are all maintaining their positions as the top three stable coins, the USD currencies, USDC, TUSD, and USDP, far too many letters, have all been delisted from Binance as of late. The funds were initially transformed into Binance's US dollar, the currency of the exchange. For those of you who missed that news, it's been about a month and a half already. Binance lists nearly every single coin in the world. They were listing also tons of other uh, stable coins, but then they announced that they were going to be del delisting every single stable coin except for Tether and for the Binance US dollar. 
Right. It just logically makes sense. If other money is going into the other coins, they would simply want all the money to stay within their ecosystem. As a result, USDC, that is, I believe, Coinbase's coin, US dollar Coinbase, uh, market share has fallen. What? As well as most USDC trading took place on Binance. However, Coinbase just made a statement that it will be expanding its support for their coin by enabling commission-free trading. I feel like they should have done that before or simply had like, you know, reasonable rate amounts. I don't know what uh, they were charging before, but I assume it was not 1% or half of a percent or a quarter of 1% because Coinbase always has super high fees. So it takes the largest crypto exchange on the planet delisting their coin for them to have to announce that they're going to be adding support for their coin. Right. Coinbase notes that acceptance of US dollar Coinbase coin has lagged behind in the United States. The post discusses, there we go, discusses that the high costs associated with converting foreign cash into one's own domestic currency are a major contribution to this problem, I'm sure. Coinbase has stated that it would no longer charge a commission for transactions, which would help increase worldwide usage by lowering this barrier. I feel like if you had done that from the get-go, I don't know what I'm telling you. I, I just assume they had relatively very weird fees. And Coinbase probably had very low fees. Remember before we kept on getting news every other week that coin that Binance was either lowering or completely ending fees for so many different trading pairs and so many different like this is how you this is how you get the business. Nobody wants to pay first of all, nobody wants to pay taxes and nobody wants to pay fees on things. If I'm using your coin back and forth, I don't want to pay all that all the time. Why didn't Coinbase think before? Like, imagine if... Listen, imagine if Coinbase had taken the initiative and they were like, hey, we're going to lower whatever fees we have for our coin. We're going to make it 10% of what it was before. And then they were the ones who went to Brazil and opened up 24,000 ATMs. This is what I'm talking about. It's so weird. Between Coinbase and, uh, and Gemini, they don't do anything. They don't try to expand. They're not really like they're just constantly and they keep listing all these things even before when we had news about the the websites that were going to be supporting the Ethereum uh, merge and like, you know, staking and stuff like that. Every other w platform had like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine percent for staking and, and Coinbase had like it was like two point five percent or something like that. And on top of that, we had news before. About a year ago, where we where I, I showed you in a video how high their fees are. There are certain coins where they the coins and staking features, unless they've changed it, where they have a twenty five percent fee. That's twenty five. Like, can you imagine if inflation was twenty five percent? I don't get it. It's just so weird. This was relatively popular news. I don't know what it is with people in stablecoin news. Stablecoin news continues to be popular all the time. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I get it. I understand that they're important, so sure, to the crypto ecosystem where people are using them or whatever the case might be. But I don't get why there's so much stablecoin news all the time. Like, it's not really doing anything for anyone else. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you've been hankering to use Coinbase coin for a very long time and you were like, oh, shucks, I can't use it because the fees are so high. Let me use it on Binance. And then Binance was like, nope, it's gone. And now you're like, oh, no, I want that one specific coin and I have to use it on Coinbase. Well, there you go. Now you have 0% uh, commission fees. Like what? It doesn't. All right. That's the Coinbase is so boring. Coinbase and Gemini, they're so boring. It's so insane. Binance has partnered with at least like 25 countries this year alone. It's so, I don't, why don't we ever hear that news from Coinbase, like doing anything? Like the last Coinbase, the, the, the last significant Coinbase news that we got was that they had opened up a new office in Ireland. That's the Coinbase uh, commission free trading on their own coin that no one's using news. I wonder why. I mean, I'm really shocked. I, I, I can't imagine why. All right. Let's move on. Also in the news, Ripple has unveiled the second wave of NFT projects to receive funding for their work on the XRP ledger. About a week, two weeks ago, it's been a while. 
Uh, the people from... I smacked my leg. The people from Ripple X, I think they're called, announced that there was going to be another huge funding round for people building on top of the XRP ledger. I think the, the, the initial number was 500... I think it was. Was it half a billion dollars? I don't remember. They're basically a bunch of companies who announced that they're going to be doing other things on top of the XRP ledger, uh, creating their own metaverses, creating smart contract platforms, creating... Uh, NFT platforms, decentralized exchanges, I think were also some of them, and they received a portion of the allocated money that was supposed to be going to them. Funding comes from Ripple's Creator Fund, which aims to support those who want to create and monetize accessible and innovative NFT experiences on the XRP ledger. In an announcement, Ripple noted that Web3 is transforming the entertainment and media industry, specifically in music. And that selected projects to receive funding will bring to life use cases for tokenization in these sectors by leveraging the power of XRP Ledger's low-cost instant settlements and built-in royalty structures. These selected projects include 9 Level 9, okay, a metaverse experience providing users with a front row seat to live and virtual concerts, conferences, award shows, and more through NFT tickets, and Anifi, okay, A N I F I E, Anif, Anif, Anifi, and okay, and NFT marketplace as well. This is one I think the kind of the coolest ideas that I've heard from the idea of metaverses, kind of being able to put on a headset and have an immersive experience for shows, for concerts. The idea of an award show, I don't know if I want to sit through all of the Grammys, but I'd be able to take my headset off, so that wouldn't be too bad. They also include Capital Block, which is a Web3 platform for sports clubs around the world that have been partnering with football clubs in Europe to launch NFT memberships for fans. Okay, what is what is that? Okay, that'd be kind of cool if you could like put on a helmet and be like front row at a football game. Like 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 literally like imagine like you you know you simply can't make it to England this weekend. But you can put on a headset and you are like on the actual front row of where the game is happening. Maybe they would have to have like a drone or something flying back and forth. So you're like, you're like really always there next to the action. I, th I think a lot of people would definitely use that. There's also SIFT projects, S-Y-F-T projects. An intellectual property production company that provides production, publishing, and management services to artists. And then they talk about uh, Ripple X. Vice President talking about money, utility, and all that other kind of stuff. So cool. Once again, uh, golf clap for the people from Ripple as far as like they're still doing stuff. And I mean that as far as uh, because of the whole SEC fiasco. I'm glad they took my advice. I'm sure they didn't watch any of my videos. But I'm glad they took my advice on you know doing other things as opposed to just trying to work with banks. Because the SEC was not going to have any of it. And this is where they currently are. So it's nice to see that they're thriving in a way. It's nice to see that they're finally making an ecosystem uh, that all the other coins already have. But I assume there's a huge amount of hype and how do I say it? A lot of people are going to use their stuff because a lot of people like Ripple and XRP. And I assume during the next bull run, we'll be hearing about all these NFT projects on top of there and all these other metaverse size that are going to be built there as well. So cool. That's the Ripple news. Uh, Godspeed. I hope it works out. Let's move on. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. Great morning. Great afternoon. Great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be. Hope it's incredible. Hope you have a fun day. Hope you go do something fun for yourself. Go watch a good movie. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.